when she was at five years old, and God saved her. Okay, we thought she was dead. We thought at least permanent injuries. And God said, you know what she had? A little scratch on her ankle. Because people prayed and believed. I remember when God saved me from heart problems. Okay, I should have been dead today because I had several heart attacks. Okay, that uh, I, I I used to take aspirin. I took uh, the proxen and all because of, because of my pride. And when I went to the doctor, he says, you were going to surgery right away. Oh, I find out that uh, I had a triple bypass. Then I had kidneys, a big stone of kidney, and so because I didn't take care of myself. And got a bladder, bladder stone, you name it, I got it, man. Okay? And I took a look at how God took me through all of that. Okay, how he, how he raised a lot of our debt that we are debt free today. He, he, he protected us from unfriendly fire within the church. Some friends and family betrayed us. All of these things God made a way for us. We bought a home with no money down. Can you imagine that? We didn't have any money, but God made a way. Okay? And the, one, the person said, okay, sold us a home, lessened the price for us so we couldn't afford it. It had to be God. Why? We believe. Whatever it was, we continued to do what God had told us to do without, without compromise. Okay? I remember how God saved me yesterday, and God is saving me today, and how He's going to save me tomorrow because it's the same God. There were times when and God interrupted when sometimes, it's just like Rima, she, she, she needed some money, she went to buy some, some something at, at, at the garage sale, they found $100 in her pocket. Oh, right? She goes, guess what? God bless. And sometimes I'm washing clothes, I just found a $5 bill in, in, in my in one of my lotion pockets, Ooh, right? I didn't know it was there. Isn't it cool when God does little things like just to remind you? He says, "Hey, I got you covered. I got you covered." Okay? Don't don't really just have to do what God tells you, tells you to do. Okay? How about somebody just paid for our lunch? We didn't know who it was, right? We said, "Who paid? Who paid the lunch?" He said, "We don't know." Okay? And he just picked up the tab for us. How about? Um, Just a visit from a friend. You know, just something, hey, just okay, just something over there and having dinner over there. So what ordinary things, when done with an extraordinary heart, really, really will bless people. Do something, do something there. You know, David, David wasn't, uh, remember, whatever you do voluntarily blesses people more because it's an issue of the heart. David tells Saul how good God was in his past when he killed the lion and the bear. So think about your past, okay? Think about your past wins. What did God do for you in the past? He'll do it today, and he'll do it tomorrow, if you trust him, okay? In all of this, okay, sometimes I see all of this, a lot of people forget. It's just like the Jesus' the disciples, right? They fed 5,000 people, but they forgot how good God was. Okay, right after that, they're doubting, hey, how come, how come we didn't have any? We didn't eat, what did you get? And God says, you know, get 12 baskets left over, right? So what's really important, remember, okay? How did God help you in the past to defeat your giants? We have plenty of experiences, man. You cannot, we cannot deny God his force. And number three is really important, expect, expect to win. Expect it. When you're confident about it, you expect to win in every situation, as long as you do it according to God's way. Assurance comes with com uh, okay, assurance comes when you're confident about something. Confidence comes when you're well prepared. Okay, I was watching the golf tournament, and, you know, and I looked at those guys, and these guys are multimillionaires, but they still can't keep practicing over and over and over again. Okay, the hours when nobody's watching, they practice over and over. You know what they're practicing? Not the fancy stuff. Okay, fundamentals. Alignment. Okay, speed. Reading the greens. Picking the right, right clubs. Taking a look at the weather conditions. Taking a look at the pit placements. you got to study. And you know what good golfers have? Here it is. A good caddy. True? The caddy is your manager. He reads the greens for you. He suggests things. He does more homework than a golfer. 
and we're looking at that. Who is your caddy? His name is the Holy Spirit. Okay? He comes alongside of you and he takes a look at you. He says, okay, right? It's going to be a left and right break over here, right? The wind speed is this way here coming from east to west. Okay? Now, take a look at the greens. Okay? It's different kind of greens. It's Bermuda grass, by the way. It's, it's going to shoot out. Okay? If you take it from the rough, okay, you cannot control it. So you have to... Okay? You have to lessen your stroke, or maybe use a lot, no, longer iron. Da 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 da. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, you go spear fishing. You say, look at the weather conditions on this side. Okay, the current is going that way. Okay, now you know what? If you want to go, okay, this place and fish. Okay, whatever that you're doing. Holy Spirit knows everything about everything in carpentry. He knows exactly what to do. Okay, working at Aulani, he knows exactly what to do. Okay, working in, in whatever it is, God knows he is the best caddy in the world. Depend on him. He is there to help you. God gave him an assignment to help us navigate through life. Good times, bad times, rich or poor times. Read Psalm 123. Though I go through the valley of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. And some of you are in the valleys of death. It looks bleak. Don't camp there. Holy Spirit will take you through. Why does He take you through the valley of death? Is because there's something to learn in the valleys of your life. You will learn much about more about yourself in your failures than your successes. But He will take you there. Okay. Expect to win. All who have succeeded in all parts of life. Were willing to do more than was expected of them, especially when nobody was watching. That's called discipline. Potential. God gives us the seed of success, pre-planned to do good works. God says, "You're my masterpiece, pre-planned to do good works." You know what that seed is called? Potential. How many of you see potential in your children? You have big dreams for them, right? Some of them is, are just natural. You know, Keith was a natural when we were growing up. Small Keith time. The brother was small, but he was quick. Okay? We played chase master ever. Okay, tried to block for him. I said he was running ahead of me before I can block for him. But he was so shifty. Okay? And I look at him. I thought, wow, that small Japanese guy can run fast, right? But we wanted Keith on our side because he could score. Okay? God is taking a look at you and look, Terry, I can make you, well, you can score, you can do it. He takes a look at, the, at Jeremy and says, man, I have a future hope for you. Remember that, it ain't over until God says it's over, okay? As long as you're breathing, you got to hope that. Every single day, wake up in the morning and say, God, what we're going to do today is going to be an exciting day. For this is the day the Lord has made, we will... Rejoice and enjoy the day. Don't waste your day worrying. Okay, be optimistic. Speak life into people. Speak life into your children. Okay, make memories. Okay, get things out of your bucket list. Amen. Amen. Some of us get bucket lists. I'm going to have uh, Jeremy and, and, and Christina share the bucket list. What they did. Okay, you guys willing to do that? Which was a picture that gonna be fun. These guys are crazy. You look at them, they're quiet. No, these guys are nuts. They just do some crazy stuff and they love doing it, right? So making memories like that. Some of you have things in your bucket list that you haven't okay, done in a long time. Amen? When are you gonna do it? Tell me when. God says, don't waste your dreams and your goals. Go do something. God created us to be winners in Christ, not whiners. Winners never fail. Whiners do. What is a whiner? Anybody know that? It's just like the big giant. And what we do is that we blame God and we live a life of regret. And that, that doesn't work. Okay? If you fall, here it is. When you fall, not if you fall, okay, when you fall, just get up. Dust yourself up and keep moving forward. Okay? You cannot win a race running backwards. Move forward. Go for it. Okay? 
Some of you go take a look at life. I hear a lot of people, it, okay, especially the, the old buggers at McDonald's, okay, talking stars, and all they're doing is talking about the things that they should have done, would have done, but didn't do. And they're talking about the big one they're going to win in Las Vegas, but never done. Okay? Expect to win. All professional teams in sports and academics, okay, singing, dancing, whatever contest, they compete for one goal, to win. True? Okay? They want to take first place. God says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. Okay? I chose you to be on my team. All of you are first string, by the way. Okay? I want you to do something that will make an internal difference that I have okay, pre-planned for you. I gave you the gifts and a passion to do that. It gives them, you know, when you really, especially professionals, okay? We are professionals. Okay? By the way, how many of you are amateur Christians? Okay, nobody. Good, I'm talking to the right group. We are professionals, okay? Here it is, okay? We are created to be winners in Christ. It gives us a sense of accomplishment, okay? When you're working hard and you get, and when you win at something, I tell you what, there's something inside of you, okay? How many of you want a participation trophy? Only participation or you want to be a winner? Think about it. Oh, I'm a participant. No, we're winners in Christ. You're more than conquerors in Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. You're formed to do good works, to glorify our Heavenly Father. That's who you are. Not just participate and just come to church and do the da 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 and not change your life. You're more than conquerors. Okay? He created us to defeat the giants that you will face throughout your life with Him. If you want to get over, okay, if you want to get over whatever your giants are, you've got to be all in. All of the time. God is good. All the time. Okay, we got to be all in also. So where, okay, where did we find, where do these people find this kind of confidence? Okay. You know where these people come I need to win. How many of you need to win? Or do you want to just participate? Okay? Okay? You're not there to win second place, by the way. How many of you really remember who was second place? <laughs> we don't remember, right? Who's second? I don't know who was second place. Oh, we know who the winners were, right? Isn't it cool when you understand that? Right? Winners, okay, you know what they do? They practice, they practice, to practice every day to perfect their skills. No matter what it is. You want to be a good carpenter, you got to do it over and over again. Okay? Whatever profession that you are, it has to be automatic. Carpenters, I bet you walk into a place, what the first look, you look at the carpentry. Okay? Cleaners, I used to have a cleaning business. I walk into a place, okay? I'm looking at, oh, how clean this place is. That's it when you do that. Golfers, you walk inside, right? Go crowd, oh, man. I remember playing lots of tennis. As you guys know, that I wanted to be, I wanted to be professional at one time. And, you know, we came to play Hawaii guy. We came with a bottle, bottle clothes, you know what I mean? We get whatever, you know, and these guys came, especially when you guys come and they get the, all their nice tennis. They have all of these wonderful uh, clothes that they have, the new rackets and the this and that. But you know exactly what the skill level is in the first five minutes. You know, they hit a couple balls, you know, and they blame the strings, they blame the sun, they blame the wind, for the, the, they blame everything for not doing well, right? Just like golf, they come up with a nice kind, okay? Nice kind. Golf clubs and they look at, oh, nice clothes and all that. You swing at the ball, you go, um, no. <laughs> you get all the Boro Boro guys come out there, ring, bang, oh. Why? It's the skill of the player. The skill of the player makes the equipment better. Amen. You can have all the equipment in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, pull home, waste your time. It's just like being a Christian. You have the Bible, the best word in all of creation. But if you don't know how to use the Bible, we are professionals, we're not amateurs, amen? 
read the Bible, do what the Bible says, you do it over and over and over again, you become proficient at it, and by the profession of your faith, you will be more than conquerors to Christ Jesus. If you do what God tells you to do, you'll have what He, what he promises you. So get into the Word of God. Start praying. Start asking God. Start following God. Okay? Remember this. Do you confidently face your giants or you try to minimize it or you try to, in hopes that maybe some, by some miracle, God will make it disappear? I remember that. Oh, God, take it away. Oh, God, take it away. Says, yeah. It's like when I, my, my, when I had a bad heart. I prayed and I prayed in God. I believe God, you know. Oh, no weapons of fashion against me. God goes, okay. Now you try, you try to tell me what to do, right? Now, no. But according to the word, okay, what does the word mean? Trust me, he said. Wherever I take you, there is an intentional, intention why I'm asking you to do this. God could heal me. God could touch me and say, you're healed, right? It's just like when, when there were blind people. God, what? God could touch them and the guy saw. God made a mud pie and put mud in the guy's eye. So God spit in his eye and same results. We need to surrender to God's will. Whatever he wants, his perfect will. You know why he sent me to the doctor? It's because I needed to pray for somebody who was dying there. He needed me to talk to somebody who needed salvation. He used my illness for somebody's health. And I willingly <coughs> say this. What is God asking you to do? How many of you are reluctant of sharing Jesus with somebody? The reason why, okay, the bottom line, the reason why he has anointed us to do something, okay, the reason why we need to conquer giants is because his dream is none shall perish. Is there somebody in Aulani that needs to be saved too? Hmm. Sunshine? Yeah? How about you, Jimmy? In your construction? Dylan? God's going to use you. How about James? Sharon, when you take you to Dubai Conventions, is there somebody who needs Jesus? How about somebody at Hawaiian Airlines? How about you, resident manager? Keith, Terry, Terry. God can use you if you're willing to be used. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Every Goliath that we face will be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. The only way that we can be convinced is to gain experience that God is for you and who can be against you. Holy Spirit, speak to your hearts. The words that we speak are seeds that will fall on good ground today. If your people are willing to accept it and to nurture it and to believe it, and to act upon it. Holy Spirit, the next few minutes, would you just speak to us? In Jesus' name.